Hello friends. So I hope you have watched the previous seven videos in this series on scientific publication and how to write a paper. And you're familiar with uh, how you are going to go about in writing your manuscript. So in this last and the eighth video, which is also one of the most important in this series, I'm going to talk about a few ethical traps that a lot of young writers fall into while they're entering with baby steps into the publication world. And these can ruin their career in no time, even before it's begun. I would talk to you about duplicate publication first. So it's duplicacy when you are republishing the same findings in more than one article. Or if you submit, let's say, your manuscript to more than one journal simultaneously. So please remember that your article should not be submitted to more than one journals and it should not be under consideration for publication at any given time in more than one journal. That's not a good academic practice. Another feature is salami publications. I'm sure all of you are familiar with what are salamis, but in, in academic work, it is when you divide a bigger research project into many small, 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 small papers, it's called a salami publication and is not viewed very kindly in the academic world. I also want to talk in this video about uh, authorship issues. So a lot of uh, students and early career researchers fall prey into authorship and it's best to discuss the authorship before you start a project and come to agreement on the names of authors and the order of authorship. And if anything changes in between the project, it is always good to revisit this agreement and arrangement with your colleagues and partners who are involved on the project. There are certain criteria which uh, have to be fulfilled before an individual may be agreed or accepted as an author on the paper. Everyone who's listed an author should have made substantial contribution to either concept, design, of the work or in having acquired, analyzed or interpreted the data. That's point number one. Two, they should have drafted the article or have revised the article or have reviewed and given intellectual inputs into the article. They should have approved the final version and they should agree to be accountable for everything that is written in the manuscript and for what has been done in the work. So and a person who is an author on the paper should have met all these four criteria to qualify as an author on the paper. Young researchers, I would also advise you that you should be careful about professional cost and gift authorship in, in your publication world. The next important concept that I want to talk to you about is plagiarism. Now, plagiarism is kind of a black hole which can suck even the most careful researchers and it can ruin their careers in a devastatingly quick fashion. So this is something that you should be very careful about and avoid at all costs. So what's the spectrum of plagiarism? At one end, you might have the unreferenced use of somebody else's published or unpublished ideas. And at the very other extreme end of uh, plagiarism, you might have a submission which is done under a new authorship of the entire paper. So these are kind of unacceptable scientific practices and you should be avoiding them. The easiest way to do plagiarism is probably cut and paste. You cut from one source and paste it into your paper and then you forget to give the adequate citation for the paper. This is a complete no, and you should avoid cutting and pasting in your paper forever in the future. Some people do patchwork. They borrow phrases and clauses from the original source without putting quotation marks and without citing the actual author of this idea or work. This is also not acceptable. Then there is paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is when you summarize without citing the source in which you might change certain words here and there or use synonyms, but you still retain the essential thoughts 
sentence structures or style of the individual and you forget to cite it to the individual. So this is definitely again something that you should not be doing. You could also refer to the bibliography section of the video series in which I have talked more about why it is necessary to cite other researchers in your paper. Most of the time plagiarism is unintentional, but uh, you should avoid even if it's unintentional, it's not pardonable. Sometimes people fall into the trap of self-plagiarism. After all, if I'm writing and borrowing from my own paper, which has been published in the past, what's the big deal about it? Well, the big deal is that you might not have the copyright and you might have violated the copyright which is held by someone else while you are citing yourself. So you should be avoiding that. There are several plagiarism softwares available on the internet. There are some free softwares and then there are some paid softwares. You put your manuscript into the software and it will give you a value, a number which will tell you how much of it is plagiarized or how much can be confused to be plagiarized. It's often asked that how much is the acceptable percentage? Well, there are no clear cut answers to this question and uh, you should avoid plagiarism altogether and 0% is an acceptable value. But then there are some journal regular guidelines which followed by most journals in which they say that if there is less than 15% plagiarism, we will accept the article. If it's 16 to 30%, we will invite the authors to revise the article. If it's 31 to 50%, the journals would outrightly reject your article. And if it's more than 50%, you might be even asked to give an explanation why it was so much of plagiarism in your paper. In this video, I would also want to talk to you about scientific misconduct and fraud. Now, there are two kinds of frauds which are recognized, which is fabrication and data falsification. So fabrication is when you do not have data and you cook up the data and imaginary numbers you punch in into your data set. This is a totally unacceptable practice. Data falsification is when you ignore the data. You are ignoring the outliers. You're not admitting that some data are missing. You do a post hoc analysis, but you do not tell the readers that you have done a post hoc analysis or maybe you don't include the data on side effects in a clinical trial. So both these practices of fabrication and falsification are not kindly viewed upon and are not good in academic practice. Let me also talk here a little bit about conflict of interest. So when you are reading a paper, if, if there is something which is revealed to you only much later in time, then it might make you feel misled or deceived or cheated. And this is certainly not a good feeling. So authors should avoid this. And if there is anything which is conflicting their interest in kinds of personal interest, a commercial interest, a political interest, a political viewpoint, an academic viewpoint, or a financial conflict, then this should be declared outright in front and front up, up front. You should be clear and say that, yes, there is conflict of interest, but it has not affected my personal judgment. And this kind of a statement is well accepted, but if you hide it, then it will definitely not be acceptable. So let's define what is conflict. A conflict is a professional judgment on the primary interest of the study, which affects the validity of the study. And if this professional judgment is unduly influenced by a secondary interest, such as a financial gain, then, or if there is anything else that may give this kind of an impression, then this is certainly falling into the conflict of interest category and should be avoided. So these are the points that I would like you to be aware of while you are entering your publication world, and you should be careful while you don't want to fall into these ethical traps. And I'm sure that if you're beginning your journey into publication world with strong footing, then you will be successful in future life and you will not fall into these traps. So with this, I wish you best of luck in your publication journey and may you have successful multiple papers in the near future. Thank you. Thank you for watching and once again, wish you best of luck. Stay tuned.